Okay. okay, let's get started. Um, I'm super excited for this discussion hour. Today we are listening from the Geoforce crew um, and, and others, mostly Dr. Leah Turner here and Jennifer. I know it's Jennifer, but okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna listen to some of the academy here. If people also log in, you can just like press it okay. and whatnot. Okay. Um, but we'll hear about the summer academies, we'll hear about the history of Geoforce, um, here led by Leah Turner and team. I recently participated in the 12th grade academy. And so those who are interested in participating, I highly encourage um, for y'all to and ask any questions. And so with that, take it away. Yeah, thank you. So here and here. Yeah, awesome. and then you can move back and forth. Perfect. Um, so hi, y'all, thanks for having me. Um, first of all, thanks, Michaela, for, for having us speak. It's um, it's really great to occupy space in your building <laughs> because we probably rather, or we would probably otherwise be um, on campus with no parking, um, but thankfully we have a whole suite. So if you didn't know, we're up on the third floor. Um, we're kind of the first suite on the left-hand side. So come join us for snacks or coffee in the morning or the morning news, we always have it on. Um, so thanks for having me. Um, also, I have Jennifer Pena here. She's one of our newest coordinators. We'll talk about the team, but we'll also talk about kind of what we do. Objectives for my talk today is kind of just to speak with y'all through what Geoforce Texas really is, what we do, what our objectives are, um, how to get engaged, um, how to maybe include this in your broader impacts initiatives, um, and I can help you all with that. So without further ado, let's go through the team. Oh, you press on the pad. The, oh, the pad. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Perfect. So I have a pretty long title. Um, I'm a program director for GeoSTEM Career Exploration and Workforce Development. Um, most recently, I was recognized for some research that I do um, and some broader impacts. So um, I'm also now a research scientist associate. Um, yeah, so that's pretty exciting. Um, I have the pleasure of being a part of this team, and it really, really is a team effort. So um, right there, we have John Hash. He's currently on paternity leave. He just um, had his first um, young daughter. Her name is Julia, and we receive updates and texts every day. Um, we are very much a part of Julia's life, young <laughs> life at this at this point. So he is out right now. Um, but uh, John has been with the program for, this is his 13th year. Um, so he's our senior program coordinator. Um, he's a supervisor of some of the other individuals that I'll mention. So Carlton Lloyd is out right now. He's actually getting married. He's in the Pacific Northwest, um, Oregon. Um, uh, right now. And so he and his wife are, are having their special time, but he really focuses on some of the research and curriculum. Um, up top right hand um, is Mitchell Lambert. He's in the, he's in the audience here. Um, he's one of our newest outreach coordinators. He's been working in youth outreach for 10 years now. This is his 10th year. Um, this is his passion. And so we're so excited to have him. Um, if you all need ideas for icebreakers or anything, it's that new. Um, Jennifer Pena, you'll notice she's in the, in the, in the uh, speaker as, as well with me. Um, she just graduated again, a, a few kind of, um, uh, recognizable names. So Jennifer Pena and Eleanor Cote <laughs> just graduated from the Jackson School recently with bachelor's uh, degrees in geosciences. Um, they are also alumni of the program, so it works. <laughs> um, and we're so happy to we're so happy to have them here. Um, if you if you all see them around, typically they'll be focused a lot. So everyone does academies. Everyone does the academies that we'll talk about, but specifically um, they've focused on the transition to college stuff. A lot of the um, GeoForce newsletter, they work together with that, the social media um, platform that we've had, um, the LinkedIn page that's popping off right now. So get engaged, it's really exciting. Um, all of our students have LinkedIn accounts now, it's so great. Um, but anyway, they do a lot of that, um, a lot of that work. Also, the website, so that's how you can engage with them. And then Jasmine Gulick is the, she's the person that keeps us all together. She's, um, we really brought her back on. So people don't know that Jasmine is a, um, she's an author. She's actually has like a agent and everything. She's like a signed whole author. Like she has a job, like a job that's really awesome. Um, but she just comes back to help little old Geo Force <laughs> keep it all together. Um, she really works a lot with our our business office. She does a lot of the hiring, a lot of HR, just a lot of the things that like I just don't have a mind to do. Um, and so she's awesome. You'll notice her last name. Um, Sean Gulick is, is her dad. <laughs> so thanks, Sean, for creating a really awesome human being. Awesome. So the um, overall mission um, and vision of GeoForce is to introduce youth, um, specifically underrepresented and unsupported um, students, to to STEM, specifically geosciences, 
through outreach, specifically in the field. Um, that was the original vision. We've since added virtual for accessibility, and obviously um, we want to be inclusive of, of people of all abilities. And so we've added the virtual, thank you COVID, for um, really putting that fire <laughs> into us to start developing those. Um, so on its face, we're a youth outreach program. Um, we were originally Doug Rackness, someone, some people may recognize the name, but Doug started, um, started GeoForce in 2005. Um, so, so I always want to give credit to where credit's due. Um, Doug, although he's brilliant and I've had plenty of really awesome phone calls with him, uh, but he took the idea from Fort Valley State University, which is an HBCU in Fort Valley, Georgia. And so that is why if you've heard of like our Fort Valley relationship with those CDEP students and the MC students, I'll talk a little bit about those programs. Um, that's why we have that because really they started a lot of what we do here through geo -4. So it started in 2005. Um, it moved. So we started in 2005. Um, Doug had a few friends in the Southwest Texas junior college uh, system. And so that's kind of where it started. Um, a lot of youth down there kind of just need exposure to the sciences, to, to especially geosciences. And so, um, and so that's kind of where it started. And then he had a lot of friends in the energy industry. And so we moved um, and transitioned to start recruiting uh, students from the Houston area. Um, and that's where our corporate sponsorship really kind of took off. This is, these are the Exxon Mobiles, the Shells, the Chevrons, Halliburton, ConocoPhillips, um, a lot of supporters of our of our team. Let me mention all of them so I can make sure I get this out on this. Um, Repsol, Oxy, I think that I've done that. Yep, Shell, Chevron, um, ConocoPhillips, Halliburton, Oxy, uh, Repsol, Rue Associates, and SLB. Um, so yes, yeah, so we take students on four, four, week-long field experiences, they're rising eighth grade through their rising 12th grade. After the rising 12th grade, we also have a math and science institute. It's more, it's it's like a, it's like a boot camp um, for like chemistry, um, uh, math, uh, we, chem what, what chemistry, calculus, and we're trying to add physics this year on to it, just because we know that's a huge deal in undergrad is like passing that first physics course. Basically think of all of the classes that try to weed you out those are the classes we're trying to really, really emphasize. Okay, um, and then, so obviously those transition, transition to college and career components. So a lot of um, youth outreach programs stop at what they have funding for, but we try to like really move that funding past. Um, so we have results, we try to track these students, um, we have support throughout. So um, again, where we would normally stop at the end of their 12th grade year, um, we, do, we try to do a really good job of, of tracking these students um, supporting them through that math and science institute that we have, and then also some of our undergrad programs at the University of Texas, um, Jackson School of Geosciences, these would be things like RTX that Dana, um, Dr. Dana Thomas runs, um, and, and other broader impact initiatives at the Jackson School. So we try not to just, there you go, um, we try to really support them through their undergrad and track them through their early career. Um, yeah, so this program is completely free. Um, what I do for the program is a lot of uh, just grant writing, working with development office, getting money for the program, some of the research, um, collaborating collaborators, working with um, UT uh, K through 12 STEM collaborators to see recruitment, what are the, uh, what can we do to improve um, really working with them to do that stuff. So that's kind of what it is. Um, it's zero cost to students. We recruit, um, we recruit at the eighth grade level. We uh, have an application for, for, for this experience. Uh, we take high performing students. So we don't necessarily ask for things like your report card, but we do ask for things like, we just really good answers to questions like talk through a challenge that you've and like, talk, talk through a challenge that you're, of your, in your life that you've kind of overcome, right? We wanna have students who are like, um, that that really want to learn. Um, why are you interested in this program, right? You want to make sure that we're keeping students who are are engaged. Awesome. So let's go to the next slide here. Um, do you want to talk? Oh, this is my, still my slide. Yeah. Um, so demographics. We we've essentially really supported those underrepresented, underserved youth. Um, you can see there in the Southwest cohort where we started. Um, that that cohort typically takes a lot of our um, 
Hispanic Latino population, obviously just based off of where we're recruiting from, um, right? And then, and then in our Austin area, we just added the Austin group. So like I was talking through, we started 2005 in Southwest, we went moved to 2008 in, in Houston, and those were our only two for a while. Um, when I got here, I really wanted to look into our backyard and make sure that we were kind of inclusive of people who are around us. Um, unfortunately, we haven't hit that, that uh, high level of diversity with our populations here. So we're looking for help to recruit those students who really need programs like this. Um, and so right now we're at about 16% Asian, 18% Hispanic Latino here and 3% Black, 50% um, multiracial. Um, and we allow students to self-identify. Um, in our Houston cohort, this is where we get a little bit more of a diverse population, so we're happy to be there. Um, but again, and then in our 12th grade specifically, um, which is what we're going to focus on for this presentation, um, we are also pretty diverse just because it brings all of the, all of the three areas together. Um, just a little bit to point out in this, uh, so we have three different cohorts from three different areas, 9th, 10th, and 11th, so that's that's nine. Then we pull them all together for the 12th grade experience. We had 10, then a virtual academy, that's 11, and then our math and science. So together, the team this year supported 12 academies, uh, 10 of them that were 44 to 40, upwards of 44 students. Um, our 12th grade was 82, I believe. It's about 80 students. 80-ish. Um, our virtual academy, on average, we had maybe 30 participants. Um, and then in our math and science, we had 30. And so um, so we had 438 registered student participants. That's without the math and science this year. Um, it's a large operation. <laughs> if in the summer you want to email Leah, <laughs> Expect a out of office message. <laughs> um, we mitigate a lot of risk for the institution and you can see how we do that through our youth programming and it's just a lot of time and attention. So um, thanks for being patient. Awesome. So um, these are kind of our gender, uh, our, our gender statistics just to kind of show where we are. Um, honestly, the only thing I wanna say about the next few slides is that we're largely female, but that's if they were, um, if, if we have, it's not to say other, it's just we have um, a plethora of different um, self, self reporting that they can, like self reported boxes that they can check. Um, and then we also have an option for them to kind of write who they really are. Um, and, and so these other doesn't mean other, it just means another one than what we've reported here. Um, so yep, out of the 438 students that we've um, that we've had registered for the program, we are largely female. You'll see 52% um, 52% here in the Austin cohort, 62 in the Southwest, uh, 56 in the Houston cohort. And then again, again, together, when we kind of put all the students together, we had about 62 females in the 12th grade cohort. Why is that? I have no idea. That's a great question. I actually don't know. Um, specifically, when we recruit students, so this is a great question. Yeah, and you're feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, I'm trying to draw it out because I don't think I'm going to take 45. Uh, you said the trend normally is opposite in those kind of fields. Yeah, you're exactly right. And so what we're the way that we recruit, uh, we recruit at schools that are largely, um, largely racially um, underrepresented as as defined by the National Science Foundation, right? Um, so we look at Title I schools, and and we also look at um, at schools that are that report over fifty percent free and reduced lunch, right? And we just I, I have no idea how we have so many females. I think it's phenomenal. Um, so so definitely the racial kind of uh, the race statistics we can we can identify why that is why it is. Um, but as far as female um, participation, I think it's awesome because females want to be scientists, and I'm here for it. Um, yeah. Yes. What is the capacity of the program? You mentioned you have like four hundred and something size cohort, which like there's not a lot of you. <laughs> Um, Thanks for pointing that out, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> so what is like, have you figured out like what's the optimal cohort size? And, like, can you actually grow the generation? Uh, yeah, so I love that. So Jenny Catania is asking what the capacity is for our program. Um, right now we are at full, full capacity and 
and highly considering scaling down um, based off of the tasks that we have to do. So um, imagine, imagine like you take right a unit. We are, we are, we're recruiting students, having them apply, blinding applications, selecting those students. Like we're doing it all um, like equitably, like right. So it inclusively. So so and then selecting them, then asking them to register. Then after they register, we're doing orientation. After that, we're uh, getting papers signed, right? All of those things. And then we lead those those twelve academies. In addition to that, we're also um, hiring. We solicit for applications for summer staff. We have to hire all of our instructors, educational coaches, all of our counselors. And when I say hiring, I mean like we are collecting all of the information that is required to, for them to be hired, and we're and then we're pushing it to the district's office. Um, on the back end, we collect all our receipts. We put them all in a nice long. Um, a nice long uh, one page PDF document. We're sending them all out. I mean, like our our credit cards are at 50,000 uh, limits and we're, we're exceeding those. So you can imagine all the expenses that we have. We are absolutely at our capacity. So those so those three areas, it's it's obviously a lot. Right. Um, I would. So so each each academy has 44 students. Um, I. I would I would love to I would lo love to move into the Dallas area. That's kind of our our vision. We would love to do that. Um, it's going to take a couple more people. Mm -hmm. And so, is it scalable, or is it the kind of thing where you might suggest to another institution, like, hey, why don't you take a geo, create your own geo force, and here's how to create it from scratch, so that you have another crew that's operating kind of independently from you? Because it seems like the field trips might not be. So scalable to just like, oh, we'll just have to play bus. Like there's a lot more logistics that go into that. But That's exactly right. Yeah. So we can't add, we can't, we can't add, well, we probably shouldn't add more to the areas that we are. It, it is highly selective, right? So these students are actually applying. Um, and and we are in the the Southwest, Houston, and Austin areas because of the airports that are very closely that are very close by. So logistically, this is right. Like you have to get parents to be able to drop them off at a place. Once those parents drop them off at a place, GeoForce is solely responsible for these students. So we have to bus them to an airport. They get on the air, right? And then we bus them around and then we bring them back. And so if those students don't, if those parents don't show up and these coordinators are out all night and, and we have to figure out how to do that. And then they have an academy, not this next week, but the week after that. So, so for instance, this is a great question. Okay. So um, we'll have a staff day. We'll have a staff day. And so say for instance, we're going out in an academy in Southwest. Um, Jennifer will be the instructor or sorry, and, and the coordinator and Eleanor, she needs to, she's never seen the, the, um, the Pacific Northwest 11th grade trip. So she's going to go on with, with Jennifer so that she gets the lay of the land. She should probably know what she's going to get into before she coordinates the next one. So they both take staff out to Southwest. They stay the night on Saturday. They pick up students on Sunday. They get on a flight. They go, then they bus to, to, to the San Antonio airport, right? Then they um, fly to Pacific Northwest. They do their academy. That takes six days. Um, they stop on Friday. Saturday is the last day. Saturday is the day that they get to come home. Depending on when their flight comes home or how long it takes parents to pick their students up, they might be driving home at one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. The next day they drop off their rental vehicle because they had to get one. Um, then they spend maybe Sunday doing some of that stuff, maybe dropping some things off here. Um, Monday, I give them the day off and then because they probably should have one. Um, I mean, they're clocking 90 plus hours. Um, on Monday, on Monday, they have the day off. On Tuesday, um, they start getting ready for that next trip because on Saturday, they go out again. So it's, it's super intense. Um, it's, it's an, in, it's an intense thing. So if we were to add anything, we would have, we would have to add more people. Um, scalability, we do have a GeoForce Alaska. It looks completely different. It looks completely different. Um, our colleague there, Sarah is, is putting out that program, but she does one she has one cohort all the way through, and then she starts again. So she misses students, right? And just because they don't have the capacity for it. Mm -hmm. We've done a GeoForce mm -hmm. Bahamas, um, and I'm not as I'm not as um, up to date on some of the things that had happened because it just was over before I got here. Um, but I know that they worked with colleagues down there. Um, we've talked about it, um, but and I get 
conversation. I, I get inquiries all the time. How do you recruit? How can I get GeoForce here? How can we do this stuff? Um, but this effort, the Jackson School put so much support into this. Like they pay for our salaries and then I, and then myself and the development team develops all the rest of the money for it, right? And so it's such a big thing that not a lot of schools can do it. I mean, they just can't. Even if we were to help them, give them all of our, here, take all of it. They, it it's just a really big operation. Um, and so big shout out to Dean and some of the leaders here at the Jackson School that actually let this thing go um, because it's high, high risk. Um, a lot of a lot of risk mitigation goes into this. Um, but obviously this institution believes in the support of of youth. And so thank goodness, right? Um, so thanks for that question. Um, here's in the counties. Um, yeah, someone from way down there got a hold of us. And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I actually took her, I think I took her, yeah, I took her home. Um, she, um, we unfortunately had a case of COVID last year in the 11th grade, um, and I didn't know that we had a student from all the way down there, but I actually flew her back. Um, it was exciting. Um, so yeah, here are kind of the, some of the schools represented in the ISDs. Um, teachers are overworked and underpaid. We don't have those connections anymore. We're now reaching out to like boys and girls clubs, um, church, black churches. I mean, I'll go anywhere. Send me, send me a leader in the community that deals with like that, like really cares about, focuses on youth around here or in any of these areas that really like just wants an opportunity for their students. And I will absolutely, I mean, we'll. I will turn off my out of office <laughs> uh, for them. Um, yeah, so so we are all open ears to, to if you have those individuals or those connections in the community or in your own respective communities um, so that we can engage more students that need these programs. Oh, crap. I always do that. Okay. Um, awesome. And so this is where Jennifer gets to shine. I'm going to let her stand on up here and take her time. Hey guys, so I know a few of you because I was on one of the leads for the 12th grade academy this year. My name is Jennifer Fania. I will also be helping lead it next year. So if y'all want to come back, I would love to have y'all back again. We're also expecting more students this coming year because this is going to be our first year where we'll have the Austin cohort finish up. So we will have a few more students, but we'll also have more coordinators because I know last year, one thing we were talking about, Jasmine and I, over the summer, was that we love the 12th grade and we just wish us as coordinators were able to talk to you guys more often than we were just because we had to travel and go with those people who were kind of leaving for the 12th grade academy so hopefully this summer we can be more present and actually talk to you guys and be there and be more of an ear as opposed to like an email or a text away so but on that right now what i'm focusing on part of my job is the college and career aspect of geoforce texas so it's like what Leo was saying earlier, where we don't just want to bring the students in to GeoForce, get them interested in geoscience, and then just drop them there. We want to help them out throughout the way. So here's some stats for our college, stu our college students so far. Since 2005, we've had 178 associate degrees, 712 bachelor's degrees, with 12% of them being in the geosciences. You're looking at one right here and Eleanor right there, both, here, both at the Jackson School as well, I might add. Um, and 104 master's degrees. And a few of those are walking around right now. Well, I think we named them, but you'll see Hector for a bit. And then I believe the other yeah, one is, yeah. oh, we'll say his name in a bit. <laughs> um, just, just for perspective, um, so we have no different statistics, but we have, we've graduated about 17 to 1800 students, depending on which year you're referring to um, from the program period. Yeah. Actually, I was looking at the numbers earlier today. It's over 18. It's like 1880 1800, something students have graduated from the program since its beginning. I was just wondering if you have those stats for the high schools that you're pulling these students from who did not participate in GeoForce to compare GeoForce grads from the same high school to non GeoForce grads to see the actual success of the GeoForce program? Oh, Jenny. <laughs> oh, are you so um, So that was <laughs> No, that's great. No, so honestly, so we're putting together um, 
I love the question that you asked. So um, I know a lot of you know who um, Adam is, um, Adam Papendik. So he and I, um, Catherine uh, Regal Crum and uh, uh, Rishon Davis, Dr. Rishon Davis from LSU, we're, we're pulling together a submission um, for the NSF. It's the Racial Equity in STEM grant. And we really want to know. So these, these, this is like all we have, right? This is very anecdotal. This is what happens. Like, ta -da. But really, we want to know, like, what is it about certain outreach programs that help what deters them from coming like why didn't the other ones decide to go right so um so i that's part of my my visa look at this <laughs> so yes also like i've done any qualitative research yeah. on the graduates to see like what they're truly getting out of yeah it. that isn't a measure of like i got a degree that's exactly right so so we're doing so what she's talking about is a control group um and I, and I love the fact that you are thinking like that. And that's really great. And that's something that we've, do. <laughs> and that's something that we've talked about. Um, but can you imagine, I mean, this is what we're doing now. Can you imagine us tracking? So we, so say, so say for instance, in the Southwest, there's 200, over 200 applicants, right? 44 get accepted. I, I, I don't know if I'm ready right now in my career to track 150 students through their high school, like track them down because we do, we now don't have any kind of yeah. association with them, right? So now we would have to have an incentive for them, um, which is which is fine. Um, but that's a whole that's a whole job in itself. Yeah. Um, and and I talked to the researchers that are going to be a part of this group, um, and we as a team decided that a control group wasn't going to be something that we do now, but it's definitely something that we want to do in the future. So yes, yes, these are definitely anecdotal. We know this. Um, the next phase is to figure out like what is working and what is not working, right? So that we can put this out into literature because there's not a lot of literature in, in youth outreach, STEM youth outreach in general, um, and specifically geoscience youth outreach. A lot of um, the, the literature tries to take um, undergrad stuff and, and mesh it into youth, but that's not the same. Um, I'm sorry, there's a question. Did you have a question? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I had a question because you said that, um, you know, 12% of the people who go on to get their bachelor's degrees go into geoscience. What's the breakdown of the other 88% in terms of like what kind of uh, degrees do they, what majors do they go for? And I guess the same sort of thing for like master's degree. And other degrees. Did you see our presentation? It's coming up. <laughs> oh, oh. It's like, it's coming up. We got you, we got you, we got you. Yes, because there is a slide about kind of what they go into, and a large portion of them go into STEM in general. Okay. A large portion also go into engineering specifically. So that's good to know. And right now, the graduating class that has started their freshman year, five of them have decided to go to the Jackson School specifically. And to speak a little bit about the whole demographics, four of those five are women, and three of the five are from the Southwest group. So that's a little bit. And three of them have decide to accept it after hearing about a really great scholarship that we get from our anonymous donor for $15,000 a year. So this is a really big help, especially for students who otherwise probably wouldn't be able to go to UT, even if they had great grades, even if they got accepted. I mean, it's very expensive. So here's a quote from one of our, from one of the freshmen. And she said, to be honest, I had decided to attend a and but I would love to go to UT with this financial support. I'll be able to afford it. And I really can't pass it up. Also, we'll say that I was counselor for the 12th grade last year, and I had spoken to her about that, and she had told me, like, that is a huge idea. Like, that is a huge ordeal. Because now we take bring our 12th graders to Austin. She got a chance to look at UT, a chance to see what she liked, decided she liked it, but obviously still, like, financial is a huge burden. And here are some notable alumni of the GeoForce program. So you maybe remember some of their names. So here's Nicole Gonzalez. She has a job now at ExxonMobil. I believe been working there for a year now. She did her master's degree here at the Jackson School. There's Catherine Garcia, who just finished up her EER master's degree uh, and did an internship with ExxonMobil and has now gotten a full-time position. Then some other notable alumni like Priscilla Pius, who went through the, Geo the Chevron GeoForce internship and then got a full-time position. Then Gabriel Villasenor, he did his undergrad here at the Jackson School. And then Dan Campos and Hector Garza, who are currently finishing up their degrees. Also, shout out to Jada. Um, she's as is an NSF PhD fellow. Like that's a really hard thing to get. So shout out to her. I think we went like 
fast forward through some slides. I think so. How do you go backwards? The other arrow. Mm -hmm. So the oh. up that oh. arrow. Oh. Yeah. It might be a little slow. Ah, this is really that's one way. And it was another way. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we skip this one. Sorry about that. But yes, here's a, the statistics we talked about a little bit earlier. And so here you'll see a notable amount go to the, into geosciences, but also go into other STEM majors and engineering specifically. And this is for, I believe, everywhere, not just UT Austin. Um, pointing out really quickly, because uh, it says geoscience major is 5%. So doesn't seem like a lot, does it? No, it does not. Um, AGI um, in 2019 reported that 0.14% um, of all students, oh, sorry, this is the National Center of Educational Statistics, sorry, that's AGI, National Center of Educational Statistics in 2019, they do a, um, a report every four years, so the next one will come up here. Um, they report that students, that 0.14% of students choose a geoscience major as freshmen. 0.14%. So if you look at ours, <laughs> it makes the 5% look so much better. We're killing the game. We're like crushing the national average. I just want to draw extra attention. But if you want geoscience majors, look no further than the GeoForce program. Um, but like, yeah, sure. Like I, I, I share that with donors and I'll be like, well, duh, like what is like, it's what, what is that? You know? And so um, it's really helpful to put statistics behind the fact that like, we're a small, we're a small discipline in general. We're, we're big impact, but really small discipline. And so, um, yeah, 5% doesn't look like a lot, um, but we're killing national average. Also include our population that you all saw our demographic. And you'll see that um, not only are we killing the game, we're doing really good work in broadening participation. Have a, that I sure. All right. What is the percentage of people that don't go to college and why don't they go to college? Yeah, that's a great question. And so, um, so we do our best, right? So we put in national, not a lot of programs do this. Um, also, why our jobs are really hard. Um, we send out an inquiry to um, the National Student Clearinghouse. So students are typically registered. Um, it, to a national student clearinghouse if they filled out things like a FAFSA or, or any of that those like documents right and so their information gets put on there. that's the that's the um most most uh, I can't remember I, it's it's the best way for us to really um without them self-reporting we do we do a we do a self-survey and then, so self-reporting, and then we take that National Student Clearinghouse, and then we kind of merge those two together, and that's how we find the statistics. Mm -hmm. If they don't, if if students don't respond to us after they finish the program, it's nearly impossible to track them. And so, unfortunately, I don't know um, the amount of students that don't go into college, um, but I can tell you how many do. So we kind of take that number and just <laughs> right, and kind of give you what we think is real. Um, because if they if they if they're not registered through National Clearinghouse and they also didn't self-report, like oh I'm not going into geosciences, which you still should report, um, we un we unfortunately lose that that person to the abyss, but but we don't really want to report a, a number that isn't real. So we report the number that we know, but we don't report the number that we don't know. So unfortunately, we don't have that number for you. Um, I can say that a hundred percent. We we've, we've never heard of a single GeoForce student. Uh, not finishing the program, not finishing their high school degree, all 100%, right, have finished. Um, a statistic that um, Dr. Dana pulled up, and again, this is a couple years ago, but 92% um, percent moved from uh, their freshman year to their sophomore year. Um, so we're doing a pretty good job of keeping that page. Also, a little note on why it's kind of really hard to get them to fill out the survey is because by the time they do complete high school, they have already graduated from the program because the last summer is the summer before their 12th grade year. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to get students to like really fill it out, especially like, We're trying. you know, they're, they're seniors in high school. They're kind of getting a lot of emails and stuff. <laughs> uh, and then here's a little rundown on what every summer looks like for our academies. So the first one we have is the ninth grade summer. So that's where we kind of just show them what is geology. 
this is kind of what it is. This is the basic like sedimentary metamorphic igneous rock. We kind of try to show them examples of it. Right now we've started this, um, this whole theme of kind of showing them the life cycle of a sediment. We start off here in Austin, gets, get them to see the campus a little bit, but also get them to look at stuff like Enchanted Rock, which they probably wouldn't have seen beforehand. And then we take them down to the coast. So as the sediment travels down. Then for the 10th grade, we do reading the rock record and we take them to the Grand Canyon and then the Southwest United States. And then for our 11th grade, we show them the igneous processes and hazards that are up in the Pacific Northwest. So that'll be areas like Oregon and Washington. We take them to Mount St. Helens, Cape Perpetua. We take them to Crater Lake, other things like that. And then we finish off now doing our 12th grade academy that some of you guys were a part of this year, which is the research-based academy. So this is kind of an area where they get to pull it all in together and less more of a, less like a, oh, this is a vacation type of trip. Like, oh, let's go somewhere for fun for a week. This is more of, okay, let's see if you actually like geology. What can you gain out of it? How can you get interested in it? And it's a good way, Leo will talk about it a little bit right now, the symposium to show, to get students to show their parents also like, hey, this is what you've been learning these past four years. This is how they can use it and this is what they can see in it in college. So I'll throw it back to Dr. Thank Thea you. Turner to talk about 12th grade. Yeah, so 12th grade is really interesting. Um, before I do, just kind of wanting to point out that like, um, imagine our population, right? So some of these students haven't left their city, um, let alone been on an airplane um, with someone that they don't know when meeting for the first time, potentially, um, and being taken to, being dropped off um, on literally the Las Vegas Strip, um, and then being asked to um, hike in, Zion's an easy hike, I would say, like the one that we do there, we get to see the Narrows, but then, um, but then we go to Bryce Canyon, and that is a hike, um, <laughs> that is a hike, um, which I was so excited, we went to three national parks this year for the, the, the 10th grade, one that I had never been to before, so Bryce Canyon was really cool, but um, just, yeah, I mean, like, so we we do focus on the curriculum. Obviously, it's we we want them to learn something, but really, um, that's that's an under like that's an undergrad thing. Like that's that's we want you to learn. We want you to see it. Someone's going to present it to you. We, we're going to give you a guidebook. You can read, walk through it. Great, and then we're going to show it to you in the field just to build your interest. This is again our mi our mission is building interest, not like creating geoscientists. That's y'all's job. Um, that is not my job. Mm -hmm. Um, so one, um, one error I have on here, sorry, Peter Fleming, um, he was supposed to be a part of this really, really awesome academy. And unfortunately, um, the schedules didn't work out. Um, but Peter, I got you for this year. Um, <laughs> you're coming in. Um, so hopefully we can get Peter, um, back on board. Also, Nicola Testado wasn't able to, um, to, to participate this year, but we had some really, really incredible researchers. So before we used to do like, um, a hypothetical challenge. Um, this year, we actually engaged them in the week of literal, like original data collection, research projects. A couple of you all in the room like led those things. And so I'll leave it to your colleagues to kind of talk through um, all of the challenges and the celebrations um, and, and, the, and the kind of the exciting things that you all went through there. Um, a big shout out to again, um, Eric and Benjamin in the room who um, took on these individuals. Michaela, obviously you helped out with Benjamin. That was awesome. You're project was really, really cool. Um, Eric, thank goodness that you uh, connected us with Dallas. She was phenomenal in the field with those students. Um, Tim, Susan, uh, Susan or Sue Huborka, um, and then Jamie Austin, and also um, Stacey Lowy from the department. Um, they were all really, really awesome um, individuals who participated um, at, like, look at those pictures, right? So um, the Jamie Austin group, they took them out on Lake Austin. Um, they were flying drones with, uh, with Tim Gouge on the coast. Um, there's one of our corporate sponsors in Sue Havorka. They were working in um, at, at the bureau. And then, um, Michaela, you've made our slide. Um, she, she's working with some of the students here at UTIG. Um, and it was so cool. So after, so after they do one week long um, research experiences and they've, they've collected their data, 
Um, now we really challenge them to build out a research poster. And I don't know when the first time y'all built it up, built out a research poster, uh -huh. but it probably wasn't in high school. So, mm -hmm. um, so we like, I mean, I remember Benjamin walking the, the students around the hall and I, I happened to um, take a bio break and I was coming out and, and I got students that were like, so Dr. Turner, what's the difference between this one and that one and that one? And pointed to this one. <laughs> I was like, well, okay, so if you're, you know, at a research, you know, symposium, you want to make sure, or, you know, a presentation, you want to make sure you have your, your this, your, your that. And so they were so curious, not just about the science, but then about like science communication, like how do I tell people about what I learned? And so that's really, really cool. So they put together these research posters. They were phenomenal. Um, we hosted this in Welch. I had never been there. That's a really great venue on campus. Um, so they had a Geoforce symposium. These po these were poster presentations and they were all put together in groups. Um, we had judging and Dan Campos led kind of the judging on, on, on that. Um, the top performers will go to the American Geophysical Union uh, Bright Stars competition. That's a high school poster presentation at AGU this year in San Francisco. So we have upwards of 20 students going with us this year. So it's the top performers of each of the six um, research groups. So we're excited to have them with us um, in December. Please look out for our coffee meetup that we'll have while we're there so you can engage and network with these students, help them, um, and then also come to that AGU Bright Stars. We will have um, we typically, before AGU, maybe a week before, we'll send out a calendar of where you can find Geoforce at AGU, so please look for that. Um, uh, we we invite our corporate sponsors to kind of network that network with them and their and their um and their families. Uh, SLB sponsored a competition called like Where Will You Be in Five Years? So students were able to submit a um a, a video and they were and a, a few were selected uh and and they got five hundred dollars scholarships, which was really nice. Um, also we sent out awards. So like all this hard work, how are we being recognized? The, um, we have, we've selected um, a Geoforce Hall of Fame or Hall of Famers. And so people who've gone on to do really, really incredible things after the Geoforce program, it's gonna come up for y'all, like y'all are gonna be next. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but we invite them back and we honor them in a really special way. Like you did it, you went through all of this. And then on top of like, you're not only finishing with undergrads, but you're like doctoral fellows and all of these things, really, really cool um, stuff. So we are, we are recognizing you for that. Also the um, professional mentor of the year, staff of the year, volunteer of the year, again, puts it, it's, this thing takes a lot of work. So people who are volunteering their time, we want to make sure that we recognize. Um, we also recognize graduating high school seniors um, and salutatorians and valedictorians. I've never seen that as many salutatorians and valedictorians in one high school program as I've seen in the Jack's, seen in the, the GeoForce program. First of all, that was completely unattainable to me. So it's completely out of my purview, but these students are rock stars. I mean, like, yes, that's cool. You can graduate like, graduate and go into geosciences here, but um, like computer science at MIT just blows my mind. I don't I don't understand that. Um, I think it's awesome. <laughs> I think it's great. We, don't, we want more of those students, but like, wow, 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 wow. Um, so like very large portion of them go to, like really want to go to Harvard and Brown and Yale and things like that, and they do. Um, and then we welcome new students you, um, from University of Texas and the Jacksons, or into the University of Texas and the Jackson School. So these are the dates of next year. Um, you can guarantee that I will have my out of office uh, message up from June 2nd all the way to August 4th and probably beyond that. Um, I would love for you all to save the date of July 28th because that is going to be the day that we have that senior recognition and awards event. So even if you don't collaborate with us, that's fine. We'd love for you to come, welcome students into the Jackson School, watch their, uh, ask them questions. I can't ask them. So they're so intelligent, they're so far beyond. Um, but, but yes, please come to this because it's just really, really cool to see. Um, so yes, save that date. Um, how to get involved. So um, two different ways. You can totally apply to be a summer staff. Um, applications will open November 1st. Um, we will close applications November 30th. Um, the only materials you need are a CV or a resume. Um, you need to know your summer availability because we'll ask you that. And so try to outline your schedule now. Um, and then thoughtful answers to simple questions. Um, we know that you all work here and you study here and you guys are really, really awesome researchers, um, but we blind those applications. So we don't know really who you are, and that's the most equitable way to choose instructors and educational coaches and staff for these programs. So please, 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 just give really good answers to to these questions, um, so that we so that we can select based off of your yeah, affinity to help. Um, 
Also, so note here specifically, um, saying it for the people in the back, anyone who's currently employed at UT must check with their current supervisor and Monica Reed, period. Um, <laughs> we just had some issues with like double appointments and things like that. So we wanna make sure that you are eligible to get paid and paid on time. Um, no overtime or dual appointments, right? Um, uh, no over so overtime would mean like if you are a part of the RTX program, but then also want to be a GeoForce counselor during the same period, um, one of the other programs can't pay you overtime because you're doing two different programs. Um, cannot com conflict with um, existing responsibilities as a grad student and undergrad for um, an undergrad participating in other programs again like RTX or staff appointment. So again, just check with your check with your office to make sure that you're you're able to do it, and um, we'll definitely and then check with me and then we'll we'll work it out. But please don't be deterred from um, helping or supporting by any of those things. It's just kind of business stuff that I actually don't understand. Um, so we have to check with Monica, um, or you can host a high school research group, which is really why I'm here. So um, broader, if this can be a broader uh, impact effort for your grant proposals, um, DOD, DOE, NSF, heck. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. <laughs> um, I can help. So um, I'm a social scientist. Um, it doesn't matter if you if you choose GeoForce or RTX or something else. Um, get a social scientist involved with your research that has something to do with human subjects. We are also researchers. We've also taken classes in our discipline <laughs> that should be respected. <laughs> um, it's um, I had someone ask at a conference like, who can who can produce a survey? Well, anyone can produce a survey. But how do you ask questions that are really equitable? Like how do you ask questions that are going to get the information that you need back? Um, these aren't these aren't things that we just like born to know how to do. <laughs> there are courses on them, and so totally, totally reach out to the education department. Um, you can seek guidance from Adam. Adam's a social scientist. Um, I've taken a couple courses. Can't tell you that I'm the best person, but. Like I've, I we just got a grant with Rowan Martindale and some of and some of her human subjects. So I'm excited to start start that research. Um, but but we really are scientists, and so um, if you're studying people, we are the best people to kind of consult with to to put to, to put together those things. Um, so I can totally help with your broader impacts if if you want to participate in something and collaborate with this. Um, I would be happy to help get money for for you to do this with us. Um, you would provide the funding for your research staff and your activities. Um, all your lab costs and materials. Um, I think that there are some funds um, floating around here. Um, we can talk about that. Um, I would also be happy to support, um, but when we get to a capacity of like eight and 10 um, research scientists, it's kind of gonna be hard to support everyone. So um, Jamie Austin, for instance, is like found support to get that boat out into Lake Austin, which was really awesome. Um, uh, development execution, um, about five days. It's all original data collection and your research project or research project for high school students. So again, you can talk to some of the individuals who participated before. Um, there is going to be some pre-work. Um, there may be some post-work if you want, um, but there's definitely going to be some pre-work. <laughs> There's definitely going to be some free work um, involved in this, um, and we would be happy to help you, um, but just kind of anticipate that time. Um, we take care of everything else. We take care of organizing their house, housing, their food, their travel, how to get here, logistical planning. How did they get from campus to here, to uh, lunch, to back to here, back to campus? All of that we take care of. You don't have to worry about anything. You show up, research, awesome, finished, great, we'll take them. <laughs> Excuse me. Also, student recruitment, something you don't have to do. We got that. Um, and support staff. So we'll have counselors and um, individuals with you that, again, can uh, keep the, the tickets for the meals. And you guys are welcome to have meals with us. Um, we will do things like... Um, um, make sure like we'll get first aid and um, all of those things, right? So you have people who, people from the GeoForce team that will support your project. Um, we just won't be able to deliver it. Okay. And awesome, special credits. Ooh, I'm like almost done. Okay, special credits. Shout out to um, Doug Ratcliffe. He obviously um, is the originator of this program. Um, he, so I was mentioning a little bit about um, how he kind of mirrored this program off of Fort Valley State University, that fourth line there um, where it all started. Dr. Isaac Crumley, I don't, if you know him, you're blessed to have that. 
Um, he is incredible. I don't know how many, long he's been working, but I think it's like 60 years. I mean, he really, really is like the godfather of this stuff. Um, he has incredible programs. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, it's a pleasure to know him. Um, Jay Rainey, I, I have never met him, but, um, he's on our guidebooks. He created our guidebooks. So shout out to, to Jay Rainey. Um, the OGs, Pete Clegg, Tiffany Cottle, Jeff Payne, and Jamie Barnes, they are like the original instructors of all of these academies. Tiffany Cottle built the ninth grade. I mean, it's really, it's really an effort that um, far surpasses anyone who works with GeoForce in this room. And so just really giving credit where credit's due. Um, we really appreciate those individuals. Um, corporate sponsors, like I mentioned before, um, all of our independent donors and individual donors, major donors, I mean, these gifts are incredible and they're life-changing. So thank you to them. All of our collaborators, again, that we've mentioned and some of those that we haven't. So um, we partner with Gear Up on campus. We partner with um, an iLeaps program at Rice. I mean, we have collaborators all over. That's a part of my job. Like see how I can sufficiently and efficiently get this done. Um, and we try. Uh, shout out to the OSP office at Jackson School. I don't even know if that's what their uh, their office is called, but Tara New Londa saved my life all the time. Um, you take business office, Sarah and her team, man, I know that that's not the team that we report to for business, but like any questions that we ever have, y'all are blessed to have them as your team. Like they're so wonderful. They so helpful. Thank you, Sarah and her team. Um, and then also the Jackson School support staff. So um, our business office, Montford Reed and the rest, um, our com the communications um, the communications unit um, uh, uh, Anton and his team always put together our annual report so so awesome that we have them um, as a part of us and then also the development team if it wasn't for them this one exists so um, thank you and I think we have seven minutes if there are any additional questions Um, you mentioned the sponsors, and they were, to my mind, led by recognized for a lot of what we got. Mm -hmm. um, but you're putting a lot of students into college degree programs that are not necessarily what we got speeding. And so why not try to get some corporate sponsorship outside of that industry? Love that. So first of all, I will take all money to... <laughs> I will take all money um, to support the development of the next generation of STEM leadership to make this place better, right? Like that's what it's about. Um, and so I'm super transparent with with all of the our current sponsors um, about where students are going and what they're doing. Um, but you're right, um, and we're trying to diversify that portfolio. So um, I mean, places like even REI or Yeti, like give me a water bottle. <laughs> we spend money on water bottles, you know. <laughs> Um, whatever, it could be anything, but we are trying to diversify that portfolio. Kristen Tuchek works on uh, corporate sponsorship and she's worked. So we've had conversations with, um, uh, National Instruments, uh, John Deere, um, the list goes on. Yeah. That's okay. interesting that comes within like the Austin tech sector. Yeah. Think about how that may be leveraged. Yeah, so um, so great question. Um, I mean, we have people who are part of our advisory board who like work at Google, right? So um, there's an opportunity definitely there. We know um, a lot of the feedback that we are getting from the individuals that we will reach out to like in the tech space and, and such um, in that trying to diversify is like, oh, this is just geosciences. But what we're really trying to get across is like, no, it's not. Fit, like 50% going to step. So brand STEM course. <laughs> oh. You know, this guy was GI Joe Power Ranger geoforce um and it's not that we don't need geologists like we totally do it's so like like emphasize geology and then like wherever we may fall in science is fine um a, a large thing that we run into and in general is like our professional mentors like, like especially those from smaller communities and smaller towns like think about the people in stem or like stem professions that you saw like for me i grew up in a uh, small town in ohio 
you know, first generation. So my mom never went to college and I'm thinking like, who has two houses? Doctors. Okay. That's what I'll do. You know, like it's not geologist. Geology isn't something you wake up and like, you know, is a thing. Um, it's something that has to be really taught and learned and explored. And um, I think that there's a natural affinity for it, which is why you all are here. Um, Cause at some point someone will along the way, like maybe introduced you to it, or you were like, Hey, I like rocks. Like, what is it that I can do? It's not just rocks, but let me know. <laughs> Here, that's a soft spot. <laughs> is like a, um, you could argue that the students are attaining this like spatial awareness of yeah. the world around them. Yep. And then yes. that like data and quantitative analysis. Yep. And so you could approach places like the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency for funding. Like they have come to UT asking us for educational programs to get more people in the workforce, particularly they need we need to hire Americans. And so they're willing and able to like, you know, help enable this kind of boom. Thing. Uh breakfast at omelet <laughs> omelet treat, you and me. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. Anyone else? Awesome. Well, thank you all for having us. It's a pleasure again. Thanks for letting us borrow your building. If you ever want to come by for coffee or treats, I go to oh, Sam's all the time, get snacks. <laughs> right now, cookies. Like all the coffee is loaded up there. Got a lot of chips, there. all the things. <laughs> well, it's a pretty good place it's to be. Time. It's a nice place to work up there. The 3103. <laughs> good culture. <laughs> Fun music playing. Fun music playing. We have a good time. I don't know if anyone's bothered by it, but we have a great time. <laughs> we get a lot of work done. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, you you saw a few members here at the UTA community and also at the Jackson School. So if you're interested in getting involved, reach out to them. Um, but yeah, let's thank Leanne and her team again one more time. <laughs>